Good morning and welcome to our weekly worship online from the North Dartmoor churches. This week we continue to uh, learn together about prayer and different ways of praying um, from as natural as our breath to vocal prayers to sung prayers to silent prayers. But we continue to explore this life-giving topic. Before we go any further, let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's start with our first song, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. So 
One of the most powerful prayers we can pray is a prayer of coming back to the Lord, of confession, of acknowledging our need for his love and his grace in our lives, where we have frequently fallen short of that divine love. So I invite you to join with me this morning, to feel again the warmth of God's sunshine on our faces, to be renewed in his spirit as we pray this prayer of confession. Father God, giver of light and grace, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness where we feel hurt and have hurt and wounded others, that we may know the joy and the freedom of your Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God, who became human to save us and to show us the way home, heal and strengthen us with his Spirit and make us channels of his peace. Amen. We come now to our Bible reading, and Leslie will read to us from the book of Deuteronomy, that stage of the journey where God's people had the promised land ahead of them, and they were encouraged to stand firm, to pray, to keep on praying, and to teach their children how to live the way God calls us. Our first reading. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Good morning. I'm Louise. I'm a doctor. I work as a GP and I specialise in the care of the terminally ill and the dying. Today I wanted to just discuss a few points about prayer. I'm no expert, these are just my thoughts and you might find them interesting or hopefully useful. I just want to take a moment to gather our thoughts. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for yourself, Lord Jesus. Amen. So why is prayer relevant? Why is it relevant to us in our lives today? As Christians, our relationship with God is fundamental. Sin causes barriers between us and God and Jesus ensured our salvation by taking all the sins of the world into himself and through his death on the cross he opened the door for us to be reconciled with God. And a way of deepening this relationship can be through prayer. Prayer makes it possible for us to build that relationship with God and speak to him and he wants us to, he wants that relationship with us. It's very much a two-way conversation, I've heard it said that prayer is definitely not a monologue but a dialogue. Justin Welby said that prayer is one of the most intimate and beautiful activities in which humans engage, whether that's alone or in the company of others. In prayer our whole identity is changed, we become more aligned with the identity of God. So if we ask what's in it What's in it for me? What's in it for us? Prayer is powerful. As Christians, we're all on this journey of transformation and prayer leads towards spiritual deepening. As we learn to listen to God, we can be better guided by him. And we do really start to understand the importance of listening through being able to listen God gives us wisdom guidance comfort and peace and the clue is that anatomically God gave us two ears and one mouth implying that we should listen at least twice as frequently as we speak Justin Welby tells us that prayer begins with a personal encounter it's an encounter with a person who in God's case is three people in one. God who comes to be with us through Jesus by his spirit and being with us, that changes us. It involves an opening up of ourselves. 
Just like the human body, prayer has many different parts. Jesus gave us the model of the Lord's Prayer when the disciples asked him to show them how to pray. There is a useful acronym called ACTS, as in the book of Acts. A for adoration, giving God praise. C for confession, dealing honestly with sin. I love the saying, let go and let God. Thanksgiving, telling God what we're thankful for, what we're appreciative for. And supplication, so praying for the needs of ourself and the needs of others. We're all at different stages of our Christian journey. Some may be just exploring, some may be new to faith, and some may be very well established Christians. And these are just some things which I have found useful for me. Sometimes people may not be 100% sure how to pray, and I think that's quite normal. They might not know what to say, or may feel a little bit self-conscious, or think that they won't do it very well because this is so and so down the street does it better. They may get bored, mind can wander a bit or even fall asleep. Or well, there may be barriers to prayer, perhaps unconfessed sin or something that you carry with you that's not yet been given to God to deal with. I like imagining the stepping stones in North Buffy over the river. If you know the area, you'll probably know exactly where I mean. It helps me reflect on the fact that a spiritual journey is a step at a time. And sometimes you don't see the whole path. You can't see with any you know, obviousness that there is a clear path of stepping stones across this big river. It's just a step at a time and you may only see or it may only be revealed to you one step at a time but with faith and persistence then it does become more apparent. And it needs patience. I'm not particularly patient but I'm learning. Everyone is different. Some methods may work for you at different times. It's experimentation. I find it helpful to start by settling myself. I find somewhere quiet with no distractions. Silence is helpful to be able to experience God's presence and the quietness to listen to his voice. And then just have some time resting in that peacefulness of the spirit. I personally have really liked using a technique called the five finger examine. It chooses the five fingers of your hand. There are many different methods to this. This is just the one that I have been using and what I wanted to share. So you start with the thumb. So you think of thumbs up in terms of what was good. So look back at the day, what was good about it, what do you want to say thank you to God for. The pointing finger is the second one. And where did, where could I point God out in my day? Where could I see him at work in my life and where did I encounter him? Perhaps something I saw or something that someone said to me. The middle finger stands 
up above the rest. So what stood out during the day, whether that was good or bad. And at this point, I try and pay attention to my emotions. So when I reflect on the joys of the day or perhaps the sorrows of the day, I ask God to show me what, you know, what he might be trying to tell me through these emotions. And then I stay with what seems significant and ask the Holy Spirit to bring my attention back to that and just let it rest with me for a while. The ring finger reminds us of responsibilities and commitments and I think of what mine today, whether that's as a Christian, a member of society, as a doctor, within my family life, my friendship group, etc. And then the little finger is the balancing finger of the hand. So how was the balance of the day? Is there any little change I could make? I then ask for God's help for the following day. I ask God to show me what I need for the following day to give me that wisdom so I can more fully live out God's love in the world. In terms of when to pray, where to pray, I'll probably sound like the martini advert from the 1980s, but literally any time, any place and anywhere. God speaks to us in so many different ways. It's a really, really exciting journey. And through persistence, I've found myself that I've really started to be able to tune in to what God's saying to me and that may come in many different forms but if we have open hearts and minds and imagination and if the Holy Spirit comes and fills us afresh then I have found that really transformational. The other thing I've started doing is keeping a prayer journal which has been great because I've been able to look back and see what I've given to God, what I've talked about, what I've asked for, issues I've discussed and then see what the answers have been and when they've come. It's really fascinating. So if you do happen to try the five finger exam and if you find it helpful, if there's anything in my talk which you found interesting or any questions that you might have please don't hesitate to come back to me. I'd love to hear how you're getting on, whether you know you found this useful and interesting and expect the unexpected. I think prayer reveals God to us in his true identity and afterwards we can never be the same. Thank you. Now we often pray for our local schools and in these weeks of lockdown our usual assembly team haven't been able to visit our schools be that for leading collective worship or our re-lessons or supporting the staff and children. So I dropped into Chagford School this week and asked how they were getting on and also how we can pray for them. Hi there, I'm Tara Penny, I'm the head of school at Chagford Primary School. Um, since lockdown, life has been very different here. We have the children of key workers coming to school most days. Um, they are in different classes. Each class has seven or eight children inside because we have to be socially distanced. The children are very used to washing their hands and getting used to a new regime. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we've managed to open up to more children and we have year one, and year six children in and some of our younger ones in our early years group. Um, the children have adapted brilliantly to what is very strange and peculiar, um, where once we encourage sharing and hugging, we're now saying keep to yourself and stay within your isolated zone. Um, we can't play football and tag outside, but we can use our imaginations and do lots of art and creative things. So life is different, but it's not terrible. Please pray for my amazing staff. They have been absolutely brilliant. They've given up so much of their time and energy to make this work here at Chagford for the children. 
um, they're tired, they need a break, please pray for their safety and their health and their well-being. And of course, please, please be praying for our families. Um, we're putting all this in place so that Chagford can be a safe place for everybody who lives here. Pat, uh, we've been learning about prayer and this last week and um, you've written a prayer for us, for our service this morning, especially. I've tried to, yes. <laughs> would you like to lead us in prayer? I would love to. Thank you very much. Now it's fair to say a little prayer for every day to thank all those who have done so much, to help those who have just sat around doing nothing much, while those so generously have been rushing around helping me and others. Dear Lord, bless their endeavours. We are now looking gratefully for the coming days when we can relax and pray. That will be the most wonderful day. With all my love and thanks again to you and you and you again. My small prayer is not enough for all the people in this dear place, Chagford and all the other villages. Maybe we are learning to live as the Lord would like us to. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you watch over us. You neither slumber or sleep. You know full well the triumphs and the tragedies of our own families, the love and the loss, the delights and the disagreements, the words harshly spoken and those not spoken at all. Amen. And now, we share some silence as we wait on God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, our notices this week are three items of good news. One is that our ancient church buildings are all open again, but do check locally um, for the different opening hours. Thank you to those of you who have cleaned and prepared and made safe our buildings. Um, so it'll be so good to be welcomed back in there for private prayer and reflection for sanctuary. It's what they were built for. Secondly, good news is that uh, work on our live cam um, to make online uh, images available of our swift boxes here at St Michael's at Chagford uh, has been going really well. So thank you to Nick and to Terry for the hours put in. And so hopefully it'll be easy to track and to follow the progress of our feathery friends in the remains of this short breeding season but it's good to see several birds sitting on nests, nurturing their eggs. So we're praying for a, a good crop. And finally, uh, well done to three friends across our North Dartmoor parishes, Judith Oakes, Lisa Johns and Jeanette Wilmot. All three have been successful and selected at interview to begin training as lay ministers, readers, in the Church of England, starting in the autumn. So uh, well done and congratulations on behalf of all of us. We look forward to hearing about more of what your studies will involve. After all that good news, we come to our last song. Hallelujah, sing. 
as we've been learning more about prayer and the way we pray. A final blessing as we go on our different ways. May the Spirit of the risen Lord fill you, protect you and inspire you to be the people of blessing he calls you to be, that this beautiful but broken world may know the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen. See you next week.